Hello. Welcome. Welcome to Dropping Into Happiness. This is, um, we're going to episode five. I, it's so fun that we're already to episode wow, five. Wow. I can't believe it. It's really flying by. I know it really is. So hopping into February though now. So we're getting into our February topics. So, um, welcome everyone. I said, this is Dropping Into Happiness. I am Rachel. I'm Maggie. Welcome. Yay. And today we're going to be talking about um, relationships along our, our journey because, you know, some relationships I feel like maybe got strained. Maybe we made new relationships. Maybe uh, they were affected in some way or form. And with it being February and, you know, talking about love and relationships all month, we figured we might as well tie that into our journey. I Yay, know. love. <laughs> I love love. I <laughs> So um, hopping right in to uh, to the discussion. So Maggie, looking back over your journey, because we just we said this a few weeks ago, right? We are we've been in our journey for um, this final journey, a solid two years now. So with looking back at the last two years, do you think that your journey has affected any relationships, good or bad, highs or lows? Wow. Okay. So I feel that. It has definitely strengthened my relationship with my partner, Seth. In the month of February, we'll actually celebrate five years together, which is crazy. February 3rd. Very cool. And uh, I think, if anything, it's really strengthened our relationship because before I started my journey, I was lower in energy. I was held back from a lot of things, which we talked about. I think it was in episode two, um, how our life was affected by losing 100 pounds. So, you know, things around amusement parks or, um, you know, going out to restaurants and thinking about where am I going to sit? You know, there were just a lot of extra things that we had to deal with. And although he was so, so, so supportive, I think by starting my health and wellness journey and really starting to prioritize me and in turn made me a much better partner. What do you think about your significant other it's kind of funny when it, okay when it comes to him specifically mm-hmm. um there's a lot of concern i think because he started to see me losing weight he started to see me being more active and he just wanted to make sure i was doing it in a healthy way and i kept trying to assure him like look this is a normal rate of weight loss because um like to me it felt like it was taking forever and i feel like to him he was like slow it down because he he fell in love with me at a, at a much higher weight and so he kept trying to reassure me like I don't need you to be thinner. I don't need you to be these things. I kept telling them, I was like, you know, I do though. I want to make sure I'm at my healthiest. I want to make sure that I can provide for everyone and be there for everyone. Um, because I mean, I mean, we say that too, especially in a lot of people think about that when it comes to their wellness journey. Like I want to be the best of myself, the best version of myself in order to be able to take care of the rest of my mm-hmm. family. And I'm um, like you said, you know, when we're, when we're slowing down, we don't have the energy. I mean, now I find myself being like, let's go here. Like, like let's go roller skating. Let's yeah. go on a hike. And I just want to do so many more things. But yeah, he was very just like, I just want to make sure you're healthy. I just want to make sure you're healthy. So, um, I, in order to get him to be like, cool, mm-hmm. <laughs> When I went to my doctor's visit and had like all my blood work done. And um, even when the doctor, like, I kid you not, the doctor looked at me after looking at my results and he goes, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing yeah. it. So I was like, I told my husband, like, see, I'm doing this good. Yeah. So the, after that, he was like, okay. He had to build and the trust. Much more on board. Yeah. yeah. He was much more on board with it. So after that, it was, it was a lot yeah. different with him. But yeah, he, he just was very concerned. <laughs> it's so interesting for me that Seth was actually the first person to encourage me to sign up for my marathon. He thought, you know, if you could, you know, if anybody could do it, you could do it. But it was never out of a place of, oh, you know, you need to get healthier and you need to lose weight. He knew I loved to be active. He knew I loved Disney. So it was kind of one of those things. He just always would remind me, I just want you to be happy. And I will, you know, I want you to be here for a long time, whatever that looks like for you. So um, it's been really cool to see him grow also as a support. You know, we talk about, um, I think we've mentioned the shift at some point in our podcast journey already, but Dr. Gary talks about how the people you love and that love you want to support you, (laughs) but they just might not know exactly what that looks like yet. So a lot of the past two years has been communicating my boundaries, my guidelines, and making sure that we're on the same page. So, you know, I think that's funny though. I didn't realize that we both, um, 
when, cause I like, I'm going into my fifth year with mm-hmm. my husband and that, you know, like it's the same thing. Like we started these relationships at our yeah. heaviest, you know, they, we, we met these people at our heaviest. And so they've been through this journey, the entire thing mm-hmm. with us. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of funny to see that adjustment, but like when it comes to um, like other people outside, just my husband, like <laughs> I remember one instance, uh, my father-in-law, he was at our house one day and he just kind of pulled me aside and he's like, you know, I just want to make sure that you're being safe. And I don't want you to start cutting things out of your life. Like he thought I was like depriving myself and I kind of giggled and he goes, what? And I'm like, Oh no, I the, literally, the only thing that I've stopped consuming was soda, mm. but we have between my husband and myself, we have, I think 17 nieces and nephews. Wow. So literally like almost every other weekend, there's a birthday party. And he goes, um, when I, when he asked me that, I said, Oh, I, I had a cupcake at the birthday party. Like I, I you know what I mean? And he goes, Oh really? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not like I, I eat dude. And he goes, Oh, okay. Then right. Like, it's like people really yeah. don't, a lot of people really don't know that we can have anything that we love, right? When we, you know, are on a health yeah. and wellness journey, it's just about the balance. Um, I just thought of a story where I was teaching full time and I had been on the journey, you know, over a year or so at this point. And I went in um, to the office at eight in the morning and they're like, oh, we brought in cupcakes. I don't know if you can have one though. Um, and I, and I just laughed and I said, well, I actually can have a cupcake. I just don't know if I want one at eight in the morning. So I'll get back to you. (laughs) It's like, people just really don't know. Like you, until we explain, take the time to explain it to them. So, well, and I think when him and I had that conversation, I was down about 60, I was on 60 pounds. And so I think that was when he, cause you know, especially when you're so successful, um, with something that's just really, really working, I think. Sometimes people just immediately assume, what are you doing? Like, are you okay? Like, what, like you're, are you depriving yourself? And it's like, no, like literally not in any way, shape or form. So it was nice to see the concern. But as soon as I kind of put that to bed, like he was totally okay. (laughs) I had a uh, colleague and Facebook friend that had reached out to me. It might've been around the same point in my journey, you know, at least 50 pounds. I think that's when people really started to notice. They reached out and they opened up about their own kind of struggle with food and, you know, things that they dealt with in the past and college and how they'd had success losing weight and everyone was congratulating them, but on the inside they were suffering and they were saying kind of, Hey, I'm here for you if you need to talk. And it almost made me paranoid of like, Oh gosh, am I doing something, you know, terrible? It was like, and something wrong with me because, you know, they just could only see the, oh my gosh, this girl's lost a lot of weight. What's going on? And I understand and I appreciate the concern, but it's also kind of what we were talking about in episode two. It's like, we just want to see, we want people to celebrate our success and see it's like, wow, we're changing the trajectory of our life. So it's just got to have those conversations, I guess. I know. And and now that you mentioned that, I have had people um, really open up to me about their struggles with their, their own insecurities and their own weight loss and how they feel that um, either they feel like they can't or it's just such a struggle. Yeah, I've had a lot of people really, um, like I said, just full blown open up. Like I won't even ask them. And they're just like, well, you know, because, you know, they just see it in themselves kind of thing, I think. And people just feel very um, connected to that journey and um, with, with their own feelings and their own trajectory. And they just kind of feel like, oh, they, they probably know what I'm going through internally. Because right. there's a lot that goes on internally I think, on this I journey. I think weight and food are so personal. And I even had some serious friendships that were tested and... Um, put to fire because those friends were dealing with their own struggles um, with eating disorders and seeking therapy and the lifestyle that I was living and the the amount I was speaking to my health and wellness on social media and things like that was not serving them in their recovery and their wellness. And uh, we really had to kind of reevaluate, okay, what can our friendship really look like when this is such a big part of my life? And your healing and your recovery is such a big part of your life. How can we find some middle ground? And it, it was tough because it's just not things that you expect, conversations you expect to have when you're, you know, just working on your health and trying to live a long, happy yeah. life. And and then you're you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm hurting people by what I'm doing. This this is, you know, it doesn't make sense. So that was that was kind of hard to work through for sure. 
Well, and looking, I mean, thinking about, you know, friendships currently, like, what do you think about going into the future? Like, is there anything that you've learned along your journey that you're going to take into maybe future friendships or as the progression of friendships continue? Um, Because I, one of the things that I think I realized is a lot of my, when I would see for, I mean, you know, we're adults now. So I got kids, I got a job, you know, we've got all these other responsibilities. And when we go to see friends, I feel like it's, um, it's, it's a, it's in a different place. Like a lot of times I see friends in restaurants and then we go and we eat or we go to the coffee shop. So it's very food centered. Mm-hmm. And I've realized that we, it just doesn't have to be basically, it can be conversation centered. It can be, you know, so, um, and I, and I think some of my friends have noticed that. Cause like you said, when people are like, Oh, can you have that? Right. Can you go there? They feel like they don't want to be a deterrent to your right. journey. They feel like, you know, and it, it doesn't have to be that way. Like I've, like I've told all of my friends, whenever we want to go out somewhere, I'm like, yes, I can absolutely go there. Yes, I can absolutely have that. But, um, figuring out how to not make the interactions so food centered is something that I think I'm going to still have to work on. I think uh, with future relationships, you know, we like to be in friendships with like-minded people. And I feel Mm. that I've made so many awesome connections since I started my health and wellness journey through Instagram, through WW coaching, through the workshops, you know, even meeting you, we would have never met had we not both started our journeys when we did, had we not been, you know, had the success that we'd had, had we not became coaches, like all of this stuff, everything's kind of meant to be. And you and I can connect on such a big part of um, our life. We have that in common. Right. Um, So, you know, moving forward, I see future friendships being friends that I make out of running or out of orange theory fitness or out of WW. um, Because it's hard to make friends as adults anyway. So, I feel like we're working in limited parameters, but, you yeah. know, I think those, I, I want to invest in friendships that I feel have um, like-minded views on health and wellness so that we can support each other, you know? Um, that's kind of where I see the future of my friendships going. But seriously, I've made so many awesome connections, like, friends that I've met virtually, friends that have became real life human friends that I would, you know, go and visit. And I think it's such a beautiful thing that we have this uh, value of our health in common. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially when it comes to, you know, our WW world, um, same, I've met so many people that I am friends with. And what's funny too, with our WW world is it's being virtual and, and exploring this community. Like we, there's people all over the United States that we're friends with now. Cause I mean, you and I are on opposite sides of the country. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if people still realize that I am in California at Maggie's in right. Florida. And, um, like one of the other friends that I have met is in Pittsburgh and, you know, one of the, there's another one in Florida. Actually, there's two other ones in Florida. I got three you friends in Florida You've got to come now. to Florida when Funny. you're ready. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Like, wait, there's a lot of you guys in Florida, but you know, we've got, I have, I know people in, you know, um, Oregon, Washington state. Like, I mean, it's really, really nice to be able, like you said, these like-minded people. So we, we start off with this, um, kind of same goal in mind, uh, like-minded. Um, and and when you say orange theory fitness, just in case anybody doesn't know when we mention things like this, I will put links in the show notes, uh, to things like that, that we talk about. So just FYI, if you're like, what, what did she say? (laughs) I will put that in the show notes. There will be a link so you can kind of click through to it and see what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of fun to, to make these new friendships. And, and it's funny because I don't know why, but I feel like when we make these new friends, I, I feel like it should be more centered around food. And it's not at all. Like we become friends because of the journey, but we stay friends because of other mm-hmm. reasons, because of so many other things that we're, um, that we're interested in. Like I, I was literally thinking yesterday, we should super do an episode uh, talking about like what humongous nerds we both are. Cause <laughs> just you so, are just a, a fun one. adult. Yeah. I am a super Potterhead and I'm like, and we're adults. Yeah we're totally adults, but there's so many. And like, I'm, I'm obsessed with, you know, Disney channel. And I mean, it's just, Oh, Marvel movies. Right. It's we could have a funny, whole podcast these... spinoff on just our I know. nerdy lives. Truly <laughs> nerds of the world unite. <laughs> 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 I know. And it just, it's, it just, it cracks me up how, um, especially being all, all across the United States, how we could have so much in common. Um, but like you said, we would have never met if it hadn't have been for our journey. And I think that's really neat to, to, um, to have a good focus on. Yeah. And there yeah. are just some people in our life who love us and we love them, but they'll never really understand everything that you go through when you're 
pushing 300 pounds and then you lose over 100 pounds and you're still navigating yeah. that you know i think there's just a deeper connection when you, when we understand what each other is going through and it's just oh, yeah. so valuable um, to have those connections. And I think that's why you and I both, we love the workshop experience in WW because it brings that that sense of community. One thing I, I do want to share, one relationship that has improved even more so is my relationship with my mom because she's on the journey with me as well. And I know you uh, had talked about your mom and and, and how she, it, yeah. um, she, she inspired you to start your journey. So my mom and I are mm-hmm. both on the journey and we talk every single day, no matter what, but now even more so we're connected because we're both going through this together and changing our lifestyles. And I, my mom spoke a goal into existence with me yesterday. She told me not to tell anyone yet until everything oh. is set in stone, but let's just say, okay. I'm just so proud of her and I'm super excited about it. And as soon as I can tell the podcast, I will. But it's just like, you know, even though my mom and I are 700 miles away from each other, I never have felt more connected with her than when we both walked into this journey. You know, it's very cool. I know that's funny you mentioned that because that's literally what I was going to say too. My, it's especially if people are going to be starting a journey. So just putting this out there, if you're going to be starting a journey, I highly recommend finding an accountability mm-hmm. buddy, even if it's someone that's not in your family. Like with our WW community, well, like I said we have people across the United States. So having that other person, like Maggie said, who understands what you're going through, who understands the struggles, who understands how you're feeling, and that person was my mom. Yeah, because we started the journey together. We've been doing this together. And two years in, you know, we're still, um, she still will call me like, Oh, I found this great recipe or, you know, a kitchen tool that she found that she really liked. She's so funny. She found this kind of chopper thing. And like one day she called me and she's like, it'll be there Thursday. And I'm like, what? I'll be there Thursday. She's like the chopper. I got, I love it. So I got you Aww. one too. And she just will like ship me things. Cause my mom's in Montana. So yeah, same. I don't live by my mom. And we literally did this entire journey together. Yeah you know, states away from each other, but we were still able to do it together. And it's just one extra thing that, that brings us together. That has that connection that we understand that we have that support system. I mean, cause we I can find it within other people, but it's been really, really nice having that support system with my mom. Uh, cause she didn't have to lose as much as I did. Um, but still like she has still had a crazy successful journey. I I've mentioned in previous podcasts that, you know, when my mom signed up, it was because she was diagnosed with diabetes and she has it completely under control now, just with what she's been doing with her, her diet and exercise. Yeah, that's so, incredible. Um, Can we touch yeah. on Rachel people in our life who may not be in support of our journey or are not, you know, getting us closer to our goals. Have you had to navigate anyone like that? The only person that was um, like I said, that it was even the slightest bit concerned was just mm-hmm. my husband. And that was just cause he wanted me to stay healthy, but I haven't had anybody. I, and Sometimes I feel like, especially when I think back to like high school, like, you know, when people are like, when certain people are not happy for your success, I haven't had anybody Mm -hmm. like that. So that's been very, that's been really nice and refreshing that I didn't have anybody be, um, like a saboteur or cause I, I, and I hear it all the time and I, it breaks my heart when I hear it in workshops and people are like, Oh, well, you know, well, my mom's a food pusher or my cousin is a pusher. And uh, I have not had anybody in my life try to push food on me just so that I wouldn't be as successful mm-hmm. or cause they didn't, they wanted me to stay the way I was or wanted me to be more like them. I have not had anybody like that along my journey. And I thank goodness for it because I don't know how I would have right. handled that situation. Yeah, if I had anyone who didn't support what I was doing, they didn't have the gall to say it to my face. Luckily, they exited <laughs> the chat very quietly and swiftly. Um, but I just, yeah, I think about hearing people who say, talk about the food pushers or have the unsupportive partner who um, is just outright mean, right? Or um, discouraging. And you think about, like Dr. Gary Foster says, the people that love you and care about you want to support you. They just might know what not know what that mm-hmm. looks like yet. Having that conversation and having that open open book, but if they don't meet you where you are, it's time to start reevaluating, which I feel like that can be really yeah. hard um, to work through and to navigate. And I'm very thankful that you and I have not had to have any of those really tough conversations. But at the end of yeah. the day, we only have one life. We only have one body. We only have one mind, right? And um, it's important to remove the things that are not serving us 
whether that's Absolutely. cookies and in our house or unsupportive <laughs> relationships. <laughs> I, right? Like that would be a really difficult conversation to have, but your, your mindset, your mental health is what is 100% should be the front runner. So, I mean, if some people aren't going to be supportive, it's, I feel like sometimes people don't, don't want to take that step because they feel like, oh, well, they're, they're my friends. But when it's an unhealthy or a toxic relationship, it is okay to either sever that or step back and take yourself out of the situation. You, you are sure you should be most concerned about first priority. So yeah, talking about relationships and love, love yourself first, yeah. guys. That's pretty much where we're going with this conversation. Yes. Yeah. You are your own Valentine. Every single year. <laughs> right. Cause we can't pour from mm. an empty cup. You've heard that before, right? Where yes. you're just putting yes. all of your worth and all of your time and all of your planning into everyone else before you're doing it for you. And eventually yeah. your cup will break and you can't oh, yeah. pour from a broken cup, right? So it's a matter of taking care of yourself first so that you then can be the best partner, the best daughter, the best sister, the best friend um, that you can be, right? I think that's what a health And it's not even about. that. Like I've had members tell me that their WW journey has has helped with in, in at their job, in their work life, because it has made them so much more centered and calm. I had a member tell us one day that she had her year end review and was um, recommended for a supervisory position. And she made everybody cry because she was like, you guys, this community, this journey, that is what I know. That's what did it. I, she had a very toxic work environment and started putting herself mm. first and started being able to, um, you know, find her center and her calm and her balance. And that made her a better employee. Mm -hmm. So her work life was better. Her, her health was better. Like her overall just well being was better. And that's just absolutely beautiful. I love when we can see that's that. That's such a great point. I am such a better teacher now than I was before I started my journey. You know, so much more patience, so much more understanding, so yeah. much more energy, a clearer mind. I mean, there are just so many benefits outside of just health on paper. So that's so cool. I'm so yeah. glad you brought that up because it made me think about how yeah. that has improved in my life. So very cool. Absolutely. Well, it is time now, though, uh, for our star goal and our recommendations. So uh, do you have one? Do you want to start this week? Because I usually start. Do you want to start with your star goal and recommendation? Sure. Week? My star goal. <laughs> I'm so excited. She's like, wait, what? Okay. My yeah. star goal this week is to track breakfast every single day this week because I am in a challenge on the WW app. So my recommendation and my star goal kind of go hand in hand. In your WW app, there are challenges um, that you can complete and you get these little badges. And truth be told, Rachel, I had been loosey-goosey tracking for quite some time and loosey-goosey maintaining. And I finally hit that recommitment button this past Wednesday. I've been honestly tracking, yes. but I'm so motivated by a little challenge. And so I joined the Rise and Shine Track Breakfast for Seven days in a row to earn a badge. And I also joined Level Up, which is tracking 210 active minutes this week to earn a silver badge. I earned this past weekend um, the Weekend Warrior Challenge and Ready, Set, Sweat. So I'm very excited fun. about it. So y'all need to look into that in your app if you haven't already, because it's a really fun little incentive. I know. I just, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I have those badges. <gasps> <laughs> See if I would have been working the program, could have had the badges. But I know I love getting those badges. It's so funny. It's like a gold star. I'm like, yes. yeah, it's really fun. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, my star goal this week. Um, Maggie and I actually a while back had talked about how we want to be jump rope girls, and I have fallen out of jump rope. You know, it's it, I because I jump rope outside. I don't have a lot of places to do it indoors. So, and it had gotten inclement weather, and but I need to just get back outside. Like I can do it underneath stuff if it's raining. So my goal, and like we always talk about a star goal, something that's specific, truly doable, has an action, and it's relevant. So I'm, I'm very I want to be specific about it. I'm going to jump rope. Two times this right. week. It doesn't have to be for an extended period of time. Even if I just do it for 60 seconds, I want to make sure I get back out there and I just get back into my jumping. 
Um, and so my recommendation is kind of kind of related to my goal too. So I my recommendation is to try something new this week. Try something that you haven't done since you were a kid. You know what I you know what I really want to do, and I I, I got to get some chalk and uh, those like the red rubber balls. I want to play Foursquare with my kids. I haven't played that in. Do you eons. remember that? Yes, used to play yes. it in elementary religiously. I know, or like tetherball. Like I want to do some more activities that kind of bring back my childhood and things like that. So that's my recommendation: is to try something new or something you haven't done since you were a kid. Come on, why not? It could be fun. <laughs> <I know. laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're gonna wrap up this episode. So uh, thanks for dropping by. Yeah, we hope you have a magical day. Bye. Bye.